Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. People sound a little sleepy. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. My name is Muna Haj Majid, and I have the honor of introducing to you all the second session for today. The title is Who Am I? Building a Strong Muslim American Identity. And your speaker for today is Brother Joshua Salam. Um, Brother Joshua was born in Camden, New Jersey in 1973, and he was raised by a single mother who kept him very involved in every community they lived in. Muslims in Kansas City, Missouri, Lombard, Illinois, and Indianapolis, Indiana are still familiar with Brother Joshua's contributions as a youth. His mother was responsible for his move involvement in MINA, Muslim Youth of North America, from its inception in 1985. Brother Joshua has continued to work with MINA over, 20, over the past 20 years as a participant and as a counselor. He helped start MINA Raps in 1992, which later led to the creation of the international music group Native Dean. Brother Joshua then moved to Virginia and started working at CARE, Council on American Islamic Relations from 2000 to 2004. Brother Joshua has returned his focus to youth work and is working at the Adams Center in Northern Virginia as our youth director today. He's gonna be talking to us a little bit about our identity, and as we talked about, building a strong American Muslim identity. This refers to more than just your name, ethnicity, and religious beliefs. It's about who you are as a result of those characteristics. Muslim youth in America often struggle to find who they are amidst polls from all directions, parents we can't relate to, a religious tradition from 1400 years ago, biased media outlets, and the overwhelming pull of American culture. How do we find ourselves in the midst of being pulled to so many directions? In this audience interactive session, Brother Joshua Sadam will share some of his experiences growing up as an American Muslim and will attempt to give some practical advice to overcoming our own identity crises and finding ourselves. Without further ado, Brother Joshua Sadam. All right. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajeem Bismillahi rahman rahim you know, that's a program, not a fan, man. You're good. How's everybody doing today? You haven't woken up yet? Assalamu alaikum. Yes, Mona, I see your, your, the stress of being up here. They're not awake yet. So I'll try to wake them up before the next speaker gets here. I won't be throwing much at the audience, but uh, please look for flying objects coming your way, inshallah. The title of this uh, session is called, Who Am I? Who am I? Who are you? You know, it's almost like uh, fighting words sometimes, depending on how you ask it. You come up to somebody, you're introducing yourself, you're giving a presentation, everybody looks around at each other like, who is this? Who are you? To even step up and say anything to us. This is the same type of question that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got, right? He came out, giving a presentation to the community about what they should do, I need you to do good things, and they're looking around at each other like, who is this? It's the same problem that Ibrahim had, and Musa had, and Isa had, and Yaqub, all the prophets. If you read the Quran, they got joked on pretty hard. They got joked. They got laughed at. Like, you know, you come and say, brothers and sisters, I have an announcement. We have to pray to God. And they, Psh, man, it's God. They start laughing. They throw rocks at him. Right? They start talking about him in the cafeteria. Right? You're sitting over there all by yourself and people laughing at you because of who you are. So today we're going to talk about who you are. Because you, be, uh, you may be different people. See, at home, you may be somebody, right? You might be the beta, or you might be, you know, yeah, well, it, you might, I don't know who you are at home. You might be a good person at home, you might be a bad person at home. But normally, it's not the same type of person that you are at school. Sometimes at school, you're known as a different person. You're known as a comedian, you're known as a smart person, you're known as the jokester, you're known as being shy, right? have a different personality. Sometimes at the masjid, you're known as somebody even different. You come to the masjid, you might be a different person. Some people are shy in the masjid, and then they go to school, and they're like, the whole 
the whole school knows them. Or in school, they're shy and they come to masjid and everybody knows them. They have different personalities depending on where they're at. And then you go in public, sometimes people have an even different person than somebody else. You go take them to the movies or you take them uh, out into the mall and you're like, I, I never thought that you would say something like that. What, where did that come from? I don't know. Anybody have a friend like that? Sometimes you take them places. No, I'm the only one? All right, I see a few hands. You don't want to embarrass anybody, right? We have different personalities. All of us do. All of us do. But that doesn't define you. That doesn't define you. Because I expect, I have a cousin. I won't tell you my cousin's name. But I have a cousin who believed that he had to be one way all the time. And if he changed that way, he felt like he was selling out. You ever heard this term? Oh, man, you, you just selling out. And the way that he was was kind of hard. He was kind of like raised on the streets, right? So his pants, you know, sagging a little bit. His walk was kind of like this. The way he would talk was, you know, you know what's up. I said, so, but when you go to a job interview, right, you can't, you can't dress like that. You can't talk like that. Well, I ain't, that's who I am. That's who I am. Right? I said, no, 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 no. Just because you change your clothes and try to speak better at the job interview doesn't mean that you're changing who you are. That's not who you are. Or do you define yourselves by how you dress and how you talk? Is that who you are? Who are you? Who am I even talking to? Are you a young adult? All the young adults, raise your hand. It's okay. Be proud to be a young adult. Why all right, young adults, raise your hand. Ah, <laughs> All right, we got, we got some salt and pepper young adults. And uh, if you are, uh, where are all the kids at? Where are all the kids at? Uh-huh. We got some big kids. All right. Where are the, some of you may not be familiar with this term, where are the adolescent? The adolescent people, where you at? Okay, got a couple in the back. That whole back row, full of adolescents. All right. Where are the, uh, the role models? Any role models out there? Yeah? All right, we're going to come back to this. We didn't see a lot of hands come up. Where are the mature people at? I see some people say, put your hand down. Put your hand down. Right? And my last one, my last one, I see a couple of hands that need to go up. Where are the knuckleheads? Where are the knuckleheads at? <laughs> Knucklehead? You're not a knucklehead. Put your... <laughs> All right. Sometimes people put you into these categories. When I say, where are the kids at? Maybe some of the younger people raise their hand, but some of the older people that felt like they was a kid, they stood up, raised their hands. I can say terms... And you may feel like, that's me. Is that me? By what I say, are you that type of person? There's a song, it's not mine, and I, I only know like one line from this song. So if you know it, you can sing along. Don't leave me hanging up here, you know, singing all by myself. <clears throat> If you are who you say you are, uh. All right. If you are who you say you are, then we might be going down the right road. But I don't know who you say you are. Some of you raise your hands three times for an adolescent, knucklehead, I'm a youth, I'm a role model. I don't know too many role model knuckleheads, but some of you raised your hand. So we're either going to be who we say we are, or we're going to be who other people say we are. And I want to, I want to analyze both of these, because there's statistics, there's research that support both of these. Sometimes, based on what other people say you are, that's who you're going to be. You know, they did this study with young children. Some of you may have studied it in school. It was like blue eye, brown eye study. Who knows that study? You know it for real? Okay. Well, they had some kids. And they separated like the blue-eyed kids from the brown-eyed kids, 
and they just started praising these blue-eyed kids, and they told them, you guys are so smart. You guys are so awesome, you know, and they gave them special things, and they told the, the, the brown-eyed kids, you guys need to, you know, get some more help, you know. You guys are troublemakers, and sure enough, sure enough, even though they just split it randomly, they didn't, they didn't do anything other than the color of their eyes, these students started living up to what they were being called. Smart, intelligent, well-behaved. And these other kids were living up to what people said they are. Troublemakers, a problem, ignorant. So are you who you say you are? Or are you who other people say you are? There's evidence to support both. There's research that says if you stand in the mirror every day, I know it's hard for some of us, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just... Now, if you stand in the mirror every day and you tell yourself, I'm going to finish college. I'm going to do it. Today, I'm going I'm to I'm get an A on this test. I'm going to do it. Today, I'm going to run faster. Than... If you just keep telling yourself positive stuff, looking in the mirror, and you say, this is who I am. I can do this. I can do this. You tend to live up to it. So there's research for both, to support both, that sometimes if you have the mindset, the dedication, the belief in yourself, you will be that person. And if everybody around you is calling you something, you tend to live up to that too. It's very important for you to know this. There's research for both. So now I want to talk about what other people call you. Who are you to other people? I can take some hands now. Who are you? If, if, if I go to school and say, who is this guy? What are they going to say? Are they going to call you by your name? Are they going to say, oh, that's the, he's one of the smart students? Are they going to say, oh, he's the class clown? Are, are they going to say, oh, that's the Muslim in the school? Are they going to say, oh, that's the, the person that stole my wallet? Who are you? Are you stretching or you had your hand up? What do other people, what do other people say we are? Now, I'm not talking about you as an individual. What do people in America say you are? Yes. You are a terrorist. If anybody's recording that, she's actually not. That's May. She's cool. She's cool. All right. What else? Who are you? Who are these Muslims? Who are you? What are people saying you are? Hands, hands. And, and if you see any hands that I don't see, let me know. In the back. You're the best of the bashers? Translation, uh, Shweep? Okay. Uh, what about the guy next to you? What? What? You're violent. Okay, so if you're not to the level of a terrorist, you're, the people think that you're violent. Is there anything positive that people are saying about you? What are, no? <laughs> He's like, nah, not really, Brother John. Yeah? Maha, yes. You're a good friend. Okay. All right. Now, see, that's definitely individual. Maha is a good friend. Now, what are people saying about Muslims? Since we're on you, give me something positive. What, what do people say, like, what's a positive stereotype about Muslims? What's one of our positive stereotypes? Yes. On time? We make good desserts? Okay, we got good food. All right, all right. Our kebab house is reign supreme, right? I'll go with that. Muslims, they got some good food. All right. Anything else positive? What do, what do we got? Some positive stereotypes. Huh? Doctors. All right, yeah. You won't be surprised to go in the hospital and find a Pakistani doctor or a Syrian doctor, right? In fact, a lot of them, the majority. Okay. Yes. Hospitable? We're kind? Is that, I don't know, is that a stereotype? Muslims are nice people? Because I know some of us bearded brothers, we don't talk to you. You know, Sonic. All 
All right, well, I'll take one more, then we're moving on. Modest. Ah. Who agrees with that? We got a stereotype of being modest. Okay, all right. So, we have positive and negative stereotypes about us. And if we're not careful as a community, we will live up to the negative. We'll live up to it. I already know, I already know right now there's young men eating up the terrorist stereotype. Eating it up. Like, yo, don't mess with him, man. He's Muslim. Yeah. Right. Right. Right? You know, because some people, I'm telling you, this is, how they, this is how they do. Some people eat up this hardcore mentality like, yo, I'm from Brooklyn. I'm from New York. You ever heard somebody say that? Right when they're about to fight, you, I'm from New York. <laughs> What's that mean? I don't know. Right? But it's supposed to intimidate the other person because, you know, in New York, we get down. Something's about to happen right now. I know people that eat up the Muslim negative stereotype. Like, yo, you want to mess with me? Bring me and my boys from overseas. We, you know, y'all dealing with guns, we dealing with tanks. They start to live up to these negative stereotypes. It's very dangerous. It's very dangerous. Now, I want to read you something <clears throat> real quick. I, uh, I went to a, and I do this fairly often, I went to a uh, school in Virginia, Northern Virginia, because the teacher invited me in to speak about Islam. It's, uh, it's a class, I think she's invited me three years now to speak to the class about Islam. And it's always, it's always, it's always like so inspiring for me to get tough questions from youth who have their own perspective. I'll tell you once, I got a question one time. I had never heard this question before. I had never even thought of it like this before. The student asked me, they said, why do y'all worship a black box? You may have heard it before. I never heard it before, and I never even thought, right, maybe it's because I'm born and raised Muslim, that people think I'm worshiping the box. But sure enough, the box is in front of me, and you know, all the Muslims are bound down to this big black box. Right? It made so much sense, the question, but I had never thought of it. I had never been questioned with it before. Gave me an opportunity to exchange. Some of these people have never been uh, confronted with Islam. And so the teacher, she has them uh, write statements. Uh, and the top of the paper says, Islam is, and then the students get to fill in the blank, okay? So she wrote at the top of the paper, Islam is, and then the students filled it in. And for me, hopefully, what these students say Islam is, that's who you are, okay? This is who you are. Think about this as I read this. This session is about who am I? And I said, you can either tell yourself who you are or other people are going to tell you who you are. So I'm going to read some statements from other people telling you who you are and what Islam is. One said, Islam is the struggle to submit to the will of Allah. It's a struggle. It's not easy. And just trying to do that, that's what Islam is. This is how this person defined Islam. Another one said, Islam is a religion of struggling, but always filled with love. Is that you? Are we filled with love and happiness and kindness, hospitable? Is that who you are? Another person says, Islam is not a way of life. You know, I, I was brought, brought up saying, Islam is not a religion, it's a way of life. Right? Anybody else? Islam is not a religion, it's a way of life. This person of a different faith took it an even step further. She says, no, I'm sorry, he says, Daniel J., Daniel J., Islam is not a way of life. Islam is life. Daniel J., 
All right, last two. Islam is an inspiring, open, and caring religion. Islam has so much to offer. A divine, yet reachable life to lead. It's important. A, a divine, yet you can reach it, you can grab it, it's obtainable. Islam is a reachable life to lead. I have so much more knowledge and respect for Islam after studying it. This is who you are. My last one. Islam is what it's intended to be. A guidance for the lost, a comfort for the disheartened, and a light in the darkness of this world. Before your speech, it was an alien language to me that proclaimed victims. Thank you for enlightening our class and dispersing misconceptions. You guys are superstars. You guys are a nation that Allah has told you. Now when we say who other people say you are, the most important one that you should be living up to what they say you are is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who does Allah say you are? Who are you? I'll take a hand. Who are you? Who does Allah say you are? Me. Huh? His servant? Okay. What else? Right here, Hamid. Peaceful, okay. These are all correct, however, not the answer that I'm looking for. All right? You are Allah's servant. You are peaceful. You should be. Kashif, we'll take your hand. You are the best! Allah says you are the best. Now, I already know that that's stressful. It's stressful. When you walk into the, look, if Kasha brings his basketball team into the gym and everybody starts whispering, yo, they the best, man. Right? People are going to be looking at them like, psh, psh, whatever. Right? Now, I guarantee you, every dribble they make, Every shot they take, every pass they make, people are going to be looking at them like, they ain't that good. They ain't that good. We could do that. Am I right? You come in claiming to be the best, you got pressure. It's stressful. Some of us don't want to live up to that. But like, no, I'm not on that team. I'm on, I'm on a beginner team, man. Right? When you come in on a beginner team, you can dribble like you want. You can shoot the air balls. Right? You can pass to the person on the wrong team and people go, yeah, he's a rookie. He's a beginner. But if you come in saying you are the best, oh, you got to show up. And that is stressful. And parents, you need to know this. It is too stressful sometimes for the Muslims, for the Muslim youth. They don't want to be on the best team. Because I'm, I'm not that good. How can I claim to be the best, the best faith, the best religion, the one God, the best prophet, all this? And I'm up here acting silly. I got my girlfriend and, you know, I'm struggling, smoking cigarettes and tried some weed and I stole this person's Gatorade in the locker room and I made fun of, you know, you got all these things on you that you know are not the best. And so what, what do you think Muslims start to do when they, when they don't think they can live up to the best? What do they start to do? Hand from over here, this brother section here, I haven't seen too many hands. Obey to your crew in there. What do people start to do if they think that they can't be the best? You start, okay, in the back, yes ma'am. They become worse. Mm. You had a hand? Okay, they join, they join a group of people that will accept them for not being that good, right? 
That is very true. Yes. Ah, they become followers and not leaders. How much time I got left? Okay, I won't be that long. They become followers and not leaders. When you, you know, we all, we all swore in. I'm pretty sure all of us swore in. Some of you swore in without even knowing it. <laughs> when you were like, eh, eh, eh. your parent came up and said, I shot one lay, lay. Right? You didn't even know it, but you signed in. All of us swore in and said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Right? Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. You in? But I don't want to be on that team. They, there's too much practice. Uh, can I go to the other squad? I oh, mean, you, you on the team. You on the team. You a Muslim. You signed up. But I do understand. Sometimes it can be stressful to be the best. Sometimes it's very stressful, especially when you have your parents and your siblings and your friends at school and the people don't like you, staring at you saying, she ain't all that. She don't even wear her hijab all the time. Right? Or, yeah, he might be doing, he prayed the message, but trust me, at school, he be hanging out with the girls. Right? I, hear I hear you say that all the time, calling each other out. He ain't all that. She ain't all that. But what, what does this paper say? Everybody's struggling. Struggling to submit to Allah. Nobody said it was going to be easy. I'm going to give you a couple examples of the burden, the burden of being called the best by Allah. Now this isn't, we didn't even talk about Nobody said that the stereotype of Muslims is the best, right? Nobody said that, uh, you know, this is what they say in the media, oh, those Muslims, they're the best. We said this is what Allah says about you. And so this is what your parents teach you, why they make you work so hard, why they're so strict on you, right? I know, I know it is stressful. Anybody ever seen that movie Coach Carter? Stop it. No, just, anybody seen that movie Coach Carter? Right? He worked those kids so hard. Why? He wanted them to be the best. Your parents, I know sometimes it's not fair. They are working you so hard. I hear the stories. I'd be like, man, that is rough. But the parent just wants the best for them. I was just, to, just today, I was taking a uh, bus from South Carolina. It's a long bus ride. It had like five stops, you know. And I don't know if you've ever ridden the, the bus system in America. I'm not going to down it, you know, in case there's any people investing in Greyhound here. It's, it got me here, but sometimes it's some rough characters, you know, on the bus, right? So I was sitting in the bus station, and I'm watching these people walk by, and I watched this one guy walk by, and he had like a really funny walk. I'm not going to imitate it because I want to make fun of it. But to me, I was, I was like, that's a funny walk, you know. And it looked like he wasn't all there, you know, just the way he walked, like something was wrong with him. But that's a funny walk. That's what I was thinking. And then I, I realized that I needed to, to pray. So I always try to go and mosey around and find a quiet place. I don't like people staring at me when I'm praying and stuff like that, you know. If I have to, I will. But I, I was like looking behind this corner, and it's dark now. In a city I don't even know, like, I think it was Fayetteville, North Carolina. So I was like, okay, not this corner, that's too dark. All right, let's go over here. That corner smells funny, all right, not there. Uh, so we were walking around until we found a good spot. So I found a good spot, put my bag down, and started praying. It was like right after I started praying, these two cars on the other side of this fence sped up, like, Arr! they jumped out the car and just started cursing. I was like... What? I picked the wrong spot, you know? <laughs> and they were cursing at each other. He's like, man, we almost had him. We almost had him. I was like, what is going down? So they were trying to kill somebody or something. I'm up here trying to pray. So I was like, all right, focus, focus. Joshua, focus. But, you know, I kept on looking up like, huh? <laughs> see if they're coming towards me. Are they yelling at me? You know, another Muslim praying in our neighborhood. Yeah. I didn't know what was going on. So they were mad on their own yelling, but it, it kind of got my senses heightened. 
Then that guy that I told you walk funny, he starts walking up to me. He goes, yo, man. I said, oh, my goodness. No, 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 no. So I just kept on praying, kept on praying, and he stopped. And so I could see him in my peripheral. So now I'm like, is this a setup? You know, I'm in a city I don't know. It's dark, got cars over here. He's shouting and cursing. Guy walking up to me. Oh, man. How many of youth keep me young? I was ready to run. I, had my, I was ready to book. So I finished my prayer. And I said, yo, bruh, you need something from me? And he walks up to me. And he says, no, I just saw you praying. And uh, I just wanted to, you know, talk to you. He said, um, I tried Islam, but uh, I don't know, man. He said, I've been Jewish, I've been Christian, I've been everything. He said, but I'm struggling. I got alcohol and drugs in me. But when I had Islam, I had peace. I felt it. I felt that peace. And I'm looking at him like, man, what do you say? What do you say? I'm in the middle of cursing, dark alleys, person right there talking about when he had Islam, he had peace. He saw me praying and something sparked in him, said, you know what? I used to have that and it was peaceful. This is why Allah puts a burden on you because the rest of the world needs it. And some of us are getting lured into what they have. And trust me, when you go down that hole, you'll see that you don't want any, anything to do with it. Because the people there looking up at you say, man, I wish I could have what you have. I wish I could be who you are. Don't try to be like me. I want to be like you. I'll end with this other conversation I had in the military with my friend, and he was drunk. And if you're not familiar with alcohol, I studied it when I was a D.A.R.E. officer. Alcohol makes you say the truth when you shouldn't. <laughs> it has uh, the ability, the way it was explained to me, sometimes you, you look at something and go, oh, man, what if we did that? No, we shouldn't do that. Alcohol takes that thing away. That, oh, we shouldn't do that. That would be stupid. You don't, you're not able to do that with alcohol. So you look at something and go, oh, man, what if I did that? Yeah, I'm going to go do that. Right? And you go do something very stupid. You say things very stupid. But it is the truth. So I'm having a conversation with this guy, and he's drunk, and he's telling me he's tired. He's tired of the life that he's living. Why is he telling me? Why is he telling me as a Muslim? Because what he thinks about Islam is what you need to feel about Islam. He thinks that Islam is peace. He thinks that Islam is guidance. He thinks that Islam is what these people are saying on this piece of paper. This is who you are. This is who you are. Whether you like it or not, you are the best. You are the best. And alhamdulillah, you're on a team because when you get tired and you need to call yourself out, coach, I need to sit down, you have your brother right next to you and said, I got your back. I'll play for you. But you're still on the best team. You are still on the best team. And this is who we are, inshallah. I want you guys to walk out today. After you take what you can from this conference, you walk out these doors and you try to be the best. And you try to struggle to submit to the will of Allah, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.